You know, the worst thing is realizing in a relationship, I'm like, damn, I'm the toxic one. Everybody's toxic. Anybody that's like, it was their fault. It's like, shut the f up. <laughs> it was your fault too. <laughs> shut the f up. Oh. Hey everybody, welcome to Girls on Guys. I'm your host, Nina Tar, of course, and I'm always joined by two people, and today it's gonna be a goddamn treat. I am with the wonderful, the beautiful, the very talented stand up comedian and the executive producer of Ted Lasso and Crashing, Jamie Lee. Oh, hi. I don't know where to look, but. Anywhere. Hi. Anywhere. Okay, great. And I am also joined by the also hilarious, uh, beautiful eyed uh, Wonder Man, uh, C Carmen Christopher. He's a comedian, actor from the show Bear, and I think you should leave two fucking amazing shows. And he's going on a stand up tour, Wave Runner tour, so be sure to look out for those comedy dates. And he's fucking hilarious. There hey he guys, thanks so much for being here. We just were talking about how. Um, <laughs> Carmen's girlfriend um, grooms him, and it's not what you think, guys. Uh, yeah, clips your toenails. I my boyfriend won't clip his toenails, and mm -hmm. uh, like almost ever, they're way too long. And I'm like, you need to fucking. I feel like I'm getting to bed with somebody with ice skates on. Like you got to. Has fucking... he ever like slashed you under the covers? Yes, I've gotten wow. slashed. Ooh. Got slashed. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Damn. Okay. Yeah. One time, um, he <laughs> recently he took his pants off. Uh, we were at our hotel and he took his pants off because he wanted to have sex. And I was like, what is that smell? And he's all like, oh, and I'm like, when's the last time you took a shower? And he's like, oh. I'm like, we've been in LA for three days and you haven't showered once. And he's like, man, what would I do without you? I'm like, you're 34. Wow. <laughs> See, I, I don't have that issue. I'm a big shower. I shower once or twice a day. I I'm bad for the environment. I dated That's a guy who showered three times a day, which I think is very excessive. But Wait, a lot. I have a follow up though. Was it like post doing things that caused him to sweat, or was it just a like I have to do this routine because it makes me feel like I'm in my routine? I fl I believe it was that. I, okay. I feel like it was that because um I, I'm not sure he was a little like obsessive compulsive in a way. Okay, okay, okay. But I just I. I can't do stinky guys. Like I dated like skaters and musicians for a long time, but mm -hmm. always the ones that were like, like they would look dirty, like they would look shitty. They'd have like mullets and like paint their fingernails and have like questionable tattoos, but they were always clean. Right, you know? they're the ones that like always floss. I know, I can't do it. I, had, I went to a restaurant the other day and the server like had BO. I'm like, you can't oh do that. God, I fucking hate that shit. You can't shit. do that. Wait, I, I did a fucking, I did a show and there was this dude back there who fucking, he had the worst BO and I kept leaving the green room and then going back wherever he wasn't. And then of course he gets up bombs. Mm. And then I'm like, first of all, you're stinking the place up. Secondly, you're bombing. <laughs> and then thirdly, yo, he's in the audience. It was at like the Lyric Hyperion, mm. one of these weird shows. And he's fucking doing whippets in the audience. Shut the fuck and up. And I'm like, what? listen, he brought all these like weird like people. And so it was like, you I feel like he math felt, addicts. I don't know, maybe, <laughs> but I feel like they felt like they had free reign to do what he wants. And then he's like hitting the fucking, oh my God. the whip it. And I'm like, and I saw, I was like, dude, what? <laughs> You can't bomb and then do whippets in He's the audience. Like I would argue that every level. if you're bombing and you feel like dog shit, you would want to disassociate and therefore take whippets. Sure, one hundred percent. But he was. It was so like it was like Shh, while I'm doing a joke in the middle of a joke, Shh, and like Stop. continually, I was like, oh you you did you got you performed to silence, and now you're fucking my setup. You wasted my night. I hate you, and you smell. Here's the thing, though, about that, because it's like, okay, I feel like the narrative around deodorant and smelling is like, you can't smell yourself. You absolutely Who the can fuck said smell that? yourself. I, I feel like people say that. They're like, oh, they don't know that they smell. No, 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 no. I'm like, I, when I was in New York, walking around yeah, yeah, all yeah. day, wearing this dress, it was like already up in my armpits kind of dress. And by the end of the day, I was like, I stink. I was like, I can smell that I stink. So I don't know how this guy is like not picking up on what he is putting down. I feel like people that have bad hygiene are some of the most selfish people on the face of the earth. I yeah. like actually, I've like yeah. talked to a friend about it. We're like, I'm like, cause it's, 
I know, yes, I'm being judgmental, but I'm like, you are lowest on the rung of the ladder of society because what you're doing <laughs> is you're saying like, hey man, yeah, I stink, but I don't really give a shit about your experience with yeah. me. Yeah. Like somebody that smells really bad and has access to a shower, we're not talking about an unhoused person. Of we're course. talking about somebody right. who is- Who could. Who, who could. could absolutely smell generally fine. Now I get if like you're a little stinky, I have a- <laughs> This happens to dudes a lot, I feel like, and maybe I, I think this happened when I was younger quite a bit, but in my in my early 20s, when men kind of smell mildewy because they don't understand that they have to transfer the things in the washing machine to the dryer mm. quickly. And then so they their clothes or their towels are like mildewy. Oh, and you're wow, like, Bro, that's you visceral. Got... You just took me back a little bit. I know, it's yeah. like wow, a sense memory wow, wow, trauma. Sure. Yeah, trauma sense that shit memory. stink, I hate that. But people that smell like yeah. objectively bad, I'm like, you oh, can't, yeah. why, why are you making us endure your presence? Also, by yeah. the way, too much negativity around cologne because cologne oh, smells great. There's a lot of like, oh, it's corny. Da, da, da. And I'm like, every look, if you're putting on so much to the point where like you're creating like a barrier of like smell around you to the point where you're like keeping people at bay, that's one thing. But mm -hmm. it's not cologne's fault. I feel like cologne yeah, does a really good job. Will, I, it's great. Oh, sorry. I will say I'm I'm Persian and a lot of Middle Easterners like really kind of- They go hard. My my uncle really goes real hard with it that I'm like, bro, the awkward yeah. issue. But he's orthodox. I'm talking about the, <laughs> I'm talking about just general conservatives with cologne. Yeah. I feel like it's- just, I, I I gotta say, there's nothing wrong with cologne. It's the people that wear it. There's something wrong with them. The people that the dudes that wear cologne, like I was just walking down the street and there was women laughing in like this boutique store, and this guy has his heart, arm around his girl, and he peeked in and he goes ha 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 like laughing, and I was like that's corny, and then I walk by and I could just smell him. It's like that type of dude, you know. He's like all like, he was like, or I had like a when I worked in I worked in sales. Uh, before I did comedy and this kid he fucking you can smell him as he came in and he was annoyed there's just the people that wear it I don't like the people that wear it yeah it's kind of douchey also it's how mortified bummer. would you be Jamie if like your partner were to like make fun of women while having you in tow okay you're right I would be like oh the, yeah that's the kind of guy who wears cologne More, you are yeah. totally right <laughs> I just want cologne to like have a moment and know like it's not your fault it's something there's a disconnect happening and I want to get back to to a place where cologne is just like a nice scent on top of like you could do it tastefully i have so many friends that do it tastefully they have like yeah. a really nice like kind of like an ex like a comme de garçon there like we go cologne. a burrito a lalabo like there's yeah. you know like just something that's kind of cool. tom ford you do yes. a little smattering of it For and sure. it just enhances. it's got to be like the Spray smallest the amount do a twirl yeah i think like a small amount i don't wear it because it's like all it brings back all it i think is memory or like the sensory thing of like this dude's a douche or this person like when somebody walks by and I can like smell them so strongly it's just like I don't think you need to do that and some colognes are so they smell of douche yeah, yeah. like an aqua de Gio. like de Gio. that's like a such a strong sort of like smells like like chlorine a little bit it's or just axe like, body spray yes, it's like if you yes. if you wear axe body spray I'm like if I asked you your favorite musical artist you'd be like Pitbull of course it's Pitbull and you're like okay I feel like he like might even like have stake in that company yeah i feel like i've seen him on a bottle yeah of it. i think so yeah i'm glad okay same with bad breath okay so oh this God. is what i found out about bad breath this like kind of fucked me up because initially i was like you know some people have just like it's like a medical condition they have know. you know halitosis and then i looked it up oh 90 percent of bad breath is caused by bad dental hygiene yes and then i'm like bro you're not flossing i know one of the yeah. hottest girls ever like she's so objectively beautiful she's so fucking cool she's <gasps> smart she's no, funny no, no, she no, dresses no, no, no. well oh, no. beautiful body no, beautiful no, face no. Her breath smells like a diaper that was left in a fucking porta potty. Consistently, like you've noticed it multiple times. So I think maybe she's of the ten percent that has like the bat. But her husband is like kind of hideous and like a dud. I'm like, this is fucking why. Because I'm mm. always like, why is she with this guy? Like, uh, I mean, he's a nice guy, but I'm just like, she's like a ten. She's go you got to show us who this theory. is when we get off. What? Yeah, for sure. No question. Uh, here's a theory, though. What if it's because she is such a 10 in every category, she maybe does it intentionally to, like, offset, to, That's like, take herself down a peg? Imagine I would be so... I'm trying so hard 
to look good. When people are like, you look great. I'm like, this took so I long. Know. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's hours. Like, I feel the same way. In your mid-30s, you just got to try so hard. Like, anybody, any woman in their early 20s, where they're like, duh, 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 duh. and I'm like, of course you're hot. Your fucking mm-hmm. skin has collagen in it, you bitch. Like, <laughs> of course you're like anybody like if you are young and not hot, you are fucking up so hard <laughs> because you're like just already naturally sexy because you're just youthful. Not to sound like a fucking Grimm's fairy tale witch where I'm like, yeah, youthful. But it's like you are like you look good. Like, I don't know. Just like people. Some people are just hot. because So you're young. saying you're on Leo's side. I mean, I get why he does that. Why I'm the fuck would he? I don't want to turn it into this type of thing. <laughs> <laughs> but I, yeah. Do you think that maybe so this this hot woman you talk about? Do you think maybe that like it's all facade, and then on the inside she's really got a lot of fucking things to work out, and it starts with her breath, oh. and then it goes into her heart, and she's just like a. I would say that she's if she sad, and she's doesn't know what she's doing i would say if she's got a bad boyfriend it sounds like it i would say that if she had like a bad personality because like some people you know when you meet somebody and they're you're like damn this person is like very physically attractive and then you talk to them and you're like wow you really just like the number just got completely nosedive like i i used to be very um intoxicated by people's like i don't know i i think when I was younger, I wanted to be with like a hot guy, mm. you know, because it felt powerful. Like I understand like the trophy wife thing. I'm like, yeah, of course. But uh, now I'm just like, there's so much like, at, nah, there's rare when somebody's like very hot and fucking cool as hell and has like an amazing personality and smart, but. And is like funny and. And not And a good themselves. cook. Yes, exactly. It's super fucking rare. Mm-hmm. But I think a lot of times the best is when somebody was like, let's say they were like, I was a fat kid. And then again, I'm like, that's always, there always had to be like, there has to be something wrong at some point in their life. And then they had to like overcome it. So then they have like a really good personality. Yeah. That's how it is. Um, I've I- ended friendships over bad breath for sure. Like not like fully like called them and been like, we can't hang out, but definitely <laughs> avoid mouth. avoid the person where I'm like, dude, it just stinks to be around you. The worst is when you are trying to actually avoid, like I'll act like I'm hard of hearing. So I'll just like turn, I'll be like, oh yeah, say that in here. And I just, so I don't have to smell their oh, breath. Yeah. And I'll be like, yeah, yeah, say that in here. And then they'll just get around you to try it. And then they'll like talk in your nose and you're like, dude, you got I worry that, um, that sometimes maybe I might have bad breath and nobody would tell me. You know what I mean? That would I think people would tell you. I think they would. I, I, also, I would hope yeah. that. Because I don't tell people that they have bad breath. I do this, I go, Hey, do you want a piece of gum? Because I'm gonna chew one right now, and then it's just kind of like a little subtle tell, like, "Hey, you should have this." And then it's oh. worse when they're like, "No, nah, I'm good." I'm like, "Fuck, man." Oh, interesting. <laughs> to help oh you. God, now I'm like, "Oh, people have offered me gum. Was that yeah, because, same. or are they just because they were popping one? They're wanting to be generous and give me one." But now I'm like in my head. That's funny. Oh, I shit. definitely have told my friend. I've told one friend that he had bad breath, but he's like a brother to me. And then he like started fixing his breath up. And like, you could tell your partner. I feel like it's always for like, sure. I always, Absolutely. yeah, I'm like, for you gotta sure. brush your teeth It's right a now. duty to tell your person you're dating if they stink. I worked have with to. a guy who was definitely either not wearing deodorant or not wearing effective deodorant. And he smelled so bad. It was in the middle of the summer. And I never said anything because I was just like, I actually don't know how to have this conversation. <laughs> I, I actually don't. So Doesn't it feel like inappropriate? And I re- and then you know what? I was like irritable towards him. I, I remember yeah. feeling like because I wasn't saying the thing, I was stuffing it down. And so it was just coming out as this like hostility <laughs> towards Aggression. It feels yeah. it's like a weird conversation to have because it's almost like where it's like, do you say if you saw a woman in public and like, her like underwear were showing or something like that. Would you be like, "Hey, you're"? I would definitely do that. Really? Woman woman. Oh, really? Yeah. If if, if something were like what if wrong, it's a choice. If something if if it was no 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 then, not a choice. Oh well, you're saying if I mis- mistook it for a choice. Yeah. Yeah, well, and then you sound like an like you sound like an orthodox like, like, yes, 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 exactly, exactly. <laughs> like but if Mormon someone's like town. something was showing <laughs> or like. So I was like, oh, I don't think they intended for that. I would go up and say something. Maybe. I wouldn't be off the table. This Mm -hmm. was like, I cannot. Because every day I was like, maybe I'll frame it this way. Or maybe I'll do like a gentle startup this way. Like I was Mm -hmm. in my head and I just couldn't say it. It was so scary. Ask your therapist what to say. Yeah, I should have done that. I wasn't seeing her at the time. That was the problem. Yeah. Uh, Well, let's get into some questions because I have, well, this like, I don't know why this, in my opinion, segues into it because maybe it has like, it's a scent thing. Somebody asked, manscaped or bush and why? 
Oh, okay. So this is a question for all of us. I feel yeah, like yeah, manscaped sure. means that like I I when guys like shave their chest, which I'm like oh, that's, pl- yeah. never never. What mm-hmm. have you ever been with a dude who then like they have you get like razor burn on your body Absolutely. and you're just like geez, like they're like rut, you're like this is just have a hair. I I think a hairy chest is like very very attractive. I think that like like a I, I'm like let's go full burnt Reynolds over here. Like I like that. I don't. I don't like, uh, in terms of pubic hair, I like it a little short, but like guys that like shave their bodies, no. what are we doing here, man? Yeah, unless you are a professional swimmer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, if you are Michael There's Phelps, no, otherwise have no, at truly it. truly no need. And uh, yeah, I don't have that expectation. I would, I, I'm not thinking about like, oh man, because it's just different. I, I don't think about it that way. I think that there's more pressure on women to maybe look a certain way, but I don't feel like the conversation is as much, at least in my friend group, around like what men should do. I just don't think about it that much. I feel like whenever I see a guy with a shaved chest, I'm like, this is like, this. it, it's it looks just, like a fucking cheese grater. Yeah, it's so, it's not, it it's just doesn't work. I don't know any woman who actually digs it. And maybe I'm wrong, I don't wanna speak for all women, right, right. but like, or men, like I actually, I have, uh, you know what? I feel like in the gay community, I do have a gay friend and he does shave his chest and I think that's a little bit more of a look that he's going for. Mm-hmm. So, and I can't speak to that, but I don't know. Let me see your tits, do you shave? What's going on? I, I do not, sh- <laughs> I don't I do not shave my chest. But you know, sometimes you gotta trim down there because it just gets so long and you're a like- trim is, trim a tri- is fair. Like a trim, I'm not talking about, I'm not putting any blade anywhere, but maybe like, you know, a consideration for, you know, my partner and maybe she does she didn't even care though she's like you don't have to do whatever but i'm like i think that i do when the pubes Mm. start getting longer than the penis then we got a little gross problem yeah i don't want to floss with yeah yeah yeah. like when it's like you're like this is a little too much you know but also i just think sometimes because it might get a little bit sweaty down there it might be good to just trim it up i agree that makes sense but i'm i'm not taking a blade to anything i will say when you like Resting on a hairy chest, like head on a hairy chest, it really does feel like a sweet little like cocoon <laughs> nest of safety. There is like, there's a warmth to it. I like it. I think it's like, I, I I don't know. There's something like very like 70s porno about it that oh, I'm like very, a, very into. That's a cool <laughs> framework. I like yeah. that. I like that, like thinking of it in those terms. I like, like, yeah, it is like a 70s porno. I it's just, hot. I'm, I'm very, I'm very into it. I like, I like hairiness. I think it's like, cause it's very masculine without like, you know, like it makes, I'm, I'm always trying to, my voice is too low and I like, you know, talk like Tony Soprano a lot of times. And I'm like, I want somebody to underscore my femininity. And when men are like pretty masculine in like not a, can you fucking actually shut the fuck up? Why? <laughs> I am like, this is making me feel more feminine. Like that's why girls, I feel like a lot of times there's like this height thing where guys, where they're like, they need to be tall. And I'm not like that I'm at all. Like I that don't, either. I don't care, but I can understand why a woman would uh, kind of connect that to like, I want to feel tiny and every, it, I get that. Cause feeling small and feeling like I'm hairless and small and itty bitty is <laughs> yeah. I, I understand why you want to feel that way. So, but it's, you know, it's preferences, you know, it's all preferences. I don't know. All right, we're gonna move on to the next one. <laughs> this is this one is actually really interesting because this was actually taken from something else that we talked to. There's another episode we talked about this very briefly, and somebody wanted to know the difference, and I think it's good. Mm-hmm. What's the difference between mansplaining and regular explaining? Mm. Good question. Ooh, I love that question. Wow. Um, well, you should take this one. <laughs> yeah. Can you explain to us what you think? I think uh, the difference between mansplaining and explaining is mansplaining is you're like focused, zero focused in on getting a point across and you're not having a conversation. You're not like consider, you're just like trying to like show off what you know, where when you're explaining something, you're actually like aware if the other person is like, engaged and listening mm. and like there could be like a rapport and a back and forth but like a mansplaining thing it feels like it probably is like more of an ego thing yeah that's yeah. interesting yeah i think it's also like i think it's also sort of over explaining something that is very simple that i also already knew in the first place yeah. and you feel like you have to break it down for me 
because I can't digest it as is. I mm-hmm. feel like it's that. So there's a little bit of like a patronizing element to it. I think yeah. that's the big element. I think it's like patronizing. I think mansplaining is speaking to somebody in a way that's like, <laughs> you don't actually really understand oh, okay. uh, Brian De Palma. You know, you that's actually right. don't really understand. Uh-huh. His work as a filmmaker. And so let me do you a favor and explain to you this thing that is, uh, not objective like they'll they'll i think mansplaining is also they feel as though they are the arbiter of information Absolutely. and that their opinion is the fact and yeah. that is a big and i think it is very one-sided it's more presentational than it is interactive yeah. so i think regular explaining is this genuine desire to share something that you're excited about yeah. and that's like fun you know, they're like, oh, yeah. did you know about this? Uh, when Brian, you know, like did this album, he did X, Y, Z, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. You know, and then there's a difference between just like, I'm having a diatribe where like, you can't, I'm not going to take a breath. You can't enter. Yeah. But I will say men, a lot of times, like, I don't, I think a lot of times uh, guys will be, especially guys in our fucking comment section and DMs will be like, like, wow, women just don't, I guess they don't want to learn anything and they don't want to, and you're like, okay, look, <laughs> there's, a, there's a big difference. There's a big difference between both of those things. And also like, I've had so many conversations with people where I feel like, oh wow, I'm like genuinely being educated about something that is that I didn't know about and they're making me feel good while knowing it. When you kind of just blast off onto something, yeah. and I will say this too, I think that men mansplain to one another. There's just a different style of communication. I think, because uh, women were very doubtful most of the time, not to paint a white brush, but it'll be like, mm-hmm. oh, I don't know, if, I think I heard this somewhere, but like, I, I think it's like this, and I'm not sure, and a guy's like, it is like this, and it's a more mm-hmm. determined way of speaking, which, you know, you look at testosterone versus estrogen, and men have a, they're, they, they're confident, that's what's like so fucking, I, I envy that quality so much, it's very factually based in their mind, <laughs> they're just yeah. like, this is the way it is, but, Guys, men don't just do that to women. I think men, they'll, when you see men get together and talk sometimes, they're almost mm-hmm. like arguing for like, who has the best and most accurate information yeah. and we're gonna talk over one another to mm-hmm. get that information. There's sometimes, also like, oh no, go No, on. no, please. Oh, I was gonna say, I think it's also like, sometimes there's a, a, a at least in my relationship, like sort of a, a need to problem solve. So I think that like they kind of go hand in hand, like me not knowing something is a problem. He's he doesn't really do this, but I was thinking about it because you were saying I really like to learn stuff. And I'm like, my partner is of such a different background than me. Like he studied Arabic. He worked in the CIA. He like spent time in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, he's like from an intelligence background. And so there is so much he knows about parts of the world I know nothing about. So I actually am like, I really want him to educate me wow. but in other s- situations i think there is this sort of dynamic of like a girl not knowing something there's like a masculine pressure to help and so it might even come from like somewhat of a pure place i mean that's totally like dependent on the guy but i think so too i think it comes from pure place how did you and your husband meet um fiance, fiance. Have, Whoa, have it done it yet. oh I thank you i know i haven't seen fuck? you since then yeah 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 um, we got, Your thank you. Oh, <laughs> I didn't um, even know. yeah, we, we got engaged in like May. Um, and we met on Bumble. Damn. You want to hear something real crazy? But I I'm Bumble like, friends. <laughs> did not meet on Bumble <laughs> friends. But the craziest thing is that we met. Um, so I got separated from my ex and then fled to New York during the pandemic, went on Bumble just to like get on an app because I had never dated on an app before. I'd been mm-hmm. with my ex for 10 years and um, I got on Bumble and he, he, Sam, was my first and only date. So I, Whoa. yeah, that's it. Holy shit. Yeah, it was really wild. I have a lot of stand up about it you right now. You need to be getting paid by Bumble I a know. lot of money. I know we're. I mean, I met him, and I was like, "Oh, that was that went pretty this well." Is a good ad. And then, like the second date, I was like, "Wait, that was he's like really cool." And then the third day, I was like, "Wait a minute." And then, yeah, a month later, I was like, "I deleted the app. I hope that's not weird." And he's like, "I also deleted the app." And I was like, "Oh, what?" 
Like it was very This is intense. I've never heard this much of a success story Whoa. from a dating app. I've heard people like Me neither. Yes. I know people that have gotten married from them and and dated somebody like long term from them, but like the first person that you talk to on it, like I think the about algorithm it all the time. is fucking on Wait, fire, dude. Yeah, Easy. that's wild. I gotta <laughs> ask though, when you like found out he was in the CIA, were you like a little bit like, whoa, this is this could be scary. This is cool. <laughs> this is kind of it's kind of cool. It's kind of sexy. Like, I mean, me it's actually very mad. Sexy. Tell me some shit. You know, like does he? You know, he, do you try to like truly get cannot shit? tell me. You anything. try to get stuff out. I I mean, I tried a little bit, but I again, this is where I'm like ignorant blind spot i was like i just don't even know the questions to ask like i know oh, so shit. little i'd be all up in I, there. I feel like yeah i, I need a, <laughs> i need someone to come in and like do that for you me because with, i don't even know where to begin i would be you, so afraid if i was like because i feel like God, I, if the guy's like i'm actually in the caa i'm like you're a liar charlatan like mm. i'd be i would be like what are yeah. you just trying to get in my pants i think it's gonna yeah. work it does <laughs> it is hot it's very hot. I think you could start with the basics. Like, <laughs> what's up with J the JFK? Like, what's your opinion on the JFK thing? So that's the biggest, like, CIA Okay, so that's thing. the icebreaker. That's the thing. That's, like, the thing everybody is, like, you know, CIA did it. And, you know, and then the next thing you could do is be, like, what's up with, you know, the Manson family? I heard that, you know, Charles Manson might have had some CIA affiliation which is, I just read this book, Chaos. Have you guys heard of it? Oh, I have heard of that. It's fucking it incredible. Wonderful? Okay, I want to read it's, it. I mean, it, this is not the podcast, so I'm not going to do this to your podcast. No, I want to be. I'm so obsessed with like uh, fucking conspiracy theories. It's okay. bad. So this isn't as much conspiracy. Well, so basically, I'll, I'll keep it really short so that people don't tune out. But basically, Helter Skelter is this book that's written by this guy, Bugliosi, who mm -hmm. is the prosecutor on Manson. And this guy found all these holes in the book. And he's like, why are all these holes here? And it was basically so like Bugliosi could get this thing out, get rich and close the case. But then he starts like really investigating it. And then there's like, there's like, well, why was Manson hanging out with this guy from the CIA? Why did this guy, Terry Melcher, who used mm -hmm. to live in Cielo Drive, then move, like go visit um, Manson because people thought that he was trying to kill, kill Terry Melcher because he wouldn't give him a record deal. Mm -hmm. And so there's like all these things, like why is he hanging out with Manson after the deaths? Like there's just all these questions and all it does is leave you with more questions and it like gives you less trust in the government. And yeah. it's just, it's really yeah. incredible. It's just like, there's just stuff like, I'm not like a huge true crime or conspiracy theory person. This was just recommended to me. But then I like, I did the audiobook and I'm like, this is incredible. So the CIA stuff to me, I'm just like, they know so much shit that we don't know. There is this like world in this country we live in that we don't know exists that's like pulling us by the strings and it's just scary stuff. It is fucking scary because then yeah. also when things are like declassified and then you're like, I fucking like the fact that MK Ultra yes. did exist yes. fucks my brain up so bad. They talk and about this. All declassified yeah. and then you're like, you you did that? Like they created Ted Kaczynski. He was yeah. a like that, that's fucking insane. So anyway, you gotta fucking you gotta go into the little light things like mm -hmm, huh, uh, lol. Like what was JFK? Like what's the deal with that? And yeah. then you fucking soft and then we go launch. Deep. Yeah, and then you yeah. go right into being yeah. like yeah. you tell me yeah. what happened on 9-11. Yeah. yeah, actually, I oh will my, say oh, the one. Oh no no go go go. I was just gonna say the nine eleven stuff is. I watched. I think I. I don't even want to say this because I honestly think I just said this on another podcast, but I watched like um, a 17 different angles of the South Tower going down at three in the morning to try to prove to my friend that like the towers collapsed because a plane hit it and not because there was explosives in it. It like hits the middle of the building. We watched 17 different angles and afterwards he was like, okay, yeah, you're right. You had to convince somebody. You like held <laughs> yeah. someone's hand to be like, this is what Three happened. In the the time. Three in the morning. Three in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. That's like a really like, okay, do you, even just to tie, tie it back to almost like mansplaining in a weird way, do you think that, I think as a female comedian, a lot of times men are very... They're kind of like, I'm actually funnier than you, but like you do it professionally. Like I've had that kind of oh, thing. And God. the fact that you guys come from almost like totally different, like he can never be as funny as you and work in that way as you. And then you can't really fully grasp what he does mm. for a living and what he did do. And I think that there's this reciprocity of respect. Like I think that's why like as a, as a comedian, I've dated a lot of musicians because I'm like, 
you don't know I we both can mutually respect what each other do but like I could never do what you do and you can never do what I do and I think that that's why that kind of connection works really well yeah like I've never really dated a comedian and I'm like I just feel like they would be like, you should punch up this joke. And I'd be yeah. like, go fucking jump off the You've building. never like, dated I'm, a comedian? Uh, I did uh, a long time ago. I was very young. And okay. he was much older than me. Um, and it did not work out when yeah. we're friends now. But it was it, it was a power dynamic that was extremely unbalanced. Yeah. And it made me feel the naivete I had as a young, you know, I was like 22. I, I You have such a wool over your eyes. Yeah. I... I I definitely think that um, if you're at any age, you could, you know, if you're in your 20s, you want to date somebody in your 40s, like you could do whatever you do, you know, do whatever, uh, do whatever you want. But there's things that, I mean, I in my experience, I'm like, wow, I was so, this just was never going to be an equal relationship, yeah. Yeah. you know? And sometimes you might not want that. And that's like totally, f- like, it's funny, equal, we think of it as like, it has to be like this. I'm like some people actually like want to get kind of taken care of and some people want to take care of people. And if you meet somebody where you have that mutual desire, it's a beautiful thing. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think like also, cause I, my ex was a comedian and so I was actually really used to the dynamic of like, hey, I have a joke idea, can I run it by you? Like I was so in that, that when I met Sam, I was like, oh, Okay, and it actually was like a really great thing for me because I was like, I have to fully trust my own comedy mind. Maybe you made because you more I don't independent. Have, yeah, because I think there was a long time where I was like, oh, I guess I'm like, I was definitely like my confidence was lower. And I will say having been with Sam, I rely on myself 100%. Like mm. I'm not second guessing and I'll still run things by him if I just need an outside opinion on anything. And he's very smart, so I trust his opinion. In some ways, I trust his opinion even more because he is not of our, he's not on our side of things. He's, yeah. He is a consumer, so it's cool to like get his outlook on what I do because it's just like fully, it's as objective as it could be even though he's obviously biased mm-hmm. because... Yeah, he loves me. <laughs> I can I can relate to that quite a bit too because I even just in terms of not professionality, but I my ex of uh, several years was a um, I really I would run to him when I'd have any issue. Like I would I just really liked that. Like I wanted him to take care of me. So like minor inconvenience. Like got a fucking I'm swear like got a parking ticket. I'm like this happened about and he's like oh it's okay and very That's thanks. exactly yeah. how I was with my yeah, ex too. Yeah, which is like fun. like I really loved that and I craved that and I was like good, yay, take care of me and soothe me and make me feel better and he would placate to that all the time. And when I got out of that relationship, I realized that it was almost like my ability to take care of myself had atrophied. Like my like muscle mass to wow. like be, 100%. to be like stand up on my own. Yep. And I remember the first time I had to do a very stressful job where it was like uh, details don't really matter, but I was I was like running late to a thing, and I had to be, all of these things, and I was so like anxious and stressed out. And normally, if I was in that position and we were together, I'd call him so he You're could like, kind of oh, talk no. me off a ledge, yeah, yeah, and then and convince me like everything's gonna be okay. And I had to within myself convince myself everything's gonna be okay. And I really grew. I really grew. And it didn't like it, it's you know obviously somebody could hear that and be like, well, that's really sweet that he would do that for you. I'm like, I totally agree. But it what it it doesn't mean it isn't sweet. It's it is more sweet, about yeah. what you become accustomed to and the lack of like reliability on yourself. And yeah, it's just a dynamic. It's not even like Yeah, that's and why I think it, for some people it's like that is their love language probably. And they're and it's not that mm-hmm. it's not a love language, it's just that when you become reliant on it, yeah. And I mean, when I got into this relationship, he doesn't do that. There's not as much coddling. And I was like, do you not? I actually got mad. And I was like, what, do you not worry about me? Are you not? And he's mm-hmm. like, no, I do worry about you. But also, should I worry about you? You seem good. You're and I was like, ass woman. Yeah. And then yeah. I was like, I am. I am fine. And then I'm like, wait, why does he want him to worry about me? Anyways, it's just interesting how you have to like yeah. undo your programming from the previous hundred. I did the same thing because my my uh, partner now, he's he's pretty hands off. You know, a lot of times it's like he he's loves- pretty handsome. He's pretty handsome. <laughs> pretty handsome. But he's pretty. He's pretty. He's handsome. Okay, but he's ahead. like very. Uh, he can be really hands off uh, to the point where I want to be coddled. And I remember just like when we first got together, 
I am almost disgusted with myself where I would be so like, like whiny to this like degree of being like, pay attention to me. And I'm like, I'm in my fucking thirties. Like I need to shut the yeah. fuck up. Like, this is so embarrassing. And now I'm like, it's, it's so much better. Cause I'm like, I don't have to, you know, if I'm out of town working or whatever, like mm -hmm. I will talk to him for like, you know, a day or two. And like some people are like, we have to FaceTime every single day when we're at, I'm like, I'm wow. so I do glad not I don't have to, that. to do that. Yeah. I, I He's the same way. I'm like, we're fine. Yeah. It's like, fine. I, I, I am, yeah. I feel like when we're apart, we're apart and we're fine. Yeah. I consistently, my uh, girlfriend tours and, you know, she works in the music industry and I obviously do and like whatever. We go like months sometimes. We go like a full month without seeing each other and then we'll see each other for two weeks and then we'll go a month and we, th we might FaceTime like twice the whole time. And it's just like, it feels fine. And it's Hell like, yeah. I don't like, I'm never like, you know, and she's touring with just like a bunch of guys, but I'm just like, I don't, I don't care. I trust her. She's good. And then she's never really like, it just, it feels like it's like all my other relationships. It was like fully like, who, who was there? Where did, did you eat? Wait, you were like, like that? No, or uh, they were like that? Uh, maybe both. Both it probably sure. inspires you just one get, another. Oh, you I just get older. Of I used to be jealous when I was younger, but like now I'm just not because I'm just like, if you did something, then you just did it. And then it's like, well, what am I supposed to do? Like, I can't stop someone's actions. You know what I mean? So I could just, all I could do is just trust the person. And that's just like a more relaxed way to like live, you know? But I've definitely, w when you were saying like, I, you know, like you were like, I don't want to say needy, but it's not needy. You were like needed attention from whoever you were dating. But I had a girlfriend who like worked at a restaurant and she'd be like, she was having a bad day and she's like, could you like come bring me food? And I'm like, you work at a restaurant. <laughs> the fuck are you oh talking about God. there's a bodega across the street what? from the restaurant i was like so i'm funny. in the middle of my day like i'm out here grinding i'm doing shit this like is in new york I, in new york i was like i would Babe, there's food all around honey oh open your eyes God. everywhere and she's like and then she was mad at me because i didn't come but it was like a thing where she just like wanted me to be there for yeah. her and i was like i get it but like no because you got you got to ask you can say hey can you like listen to me can we talk like maybe we can talk about or something I miss or, you or, or like, like yeah, yeah something anything i'm gonna see you tonight can we see each other tonight but like no like it's and it, you know at that time my brain didn't understand that she just needed some attention but i was yeah. like i'm not bringing you food yeah you, that's you got not, that's you got not a the kitchen. kind of attention you yeah. eat free there every day stop it right. yeah <laughs> it has, you have to be reasonable with like your requests yeah. and like the energy and 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 some would say like, I mean, the best relationship you could be in is like one that almost like challenges your complacency and comfortability. Like Definitely. that's, that is like the best. And it's fucking hard. Cause I mean, I would get sometimes, you know, you get used to certain things and you're programmed in certain relationships. And then when you get into like a new one where it's a little different and, and they don't operate the same way, you feel slighted and you're like, you fuck you. Like you don't care about me. And it's like, oh, yeah. this is actually totally different. You have to completely reorient your mind and like your desires in a way. Yeah. And it's fucking trippy, man. Especially yeah. like in my last relationship, there was a lot of fighting uh, that I hated. And I feel like uh, Sam comes from a family which is like, fully opposite of the spectrum like we don't like to fight we don't we don't even really like a lot of conflict mm -hmm. and then i would like get mad at him and he's like why are you mad like it was like even that i had to learn like not everybody wants to argue all the no. time yeah. like i hate it yeah he yeah. It makes him so stressed and yeah when he like he there was one time where it was like a breakthrough where he articulated like exactly how it makes him feel and i was like Oh, okay. I have to stop. I have to stop. This what? is like old shit. This is it's that thing of like if it's not his if it's his if it's hysterical, it's historical. Yes. That was exactly what was happening. What? I was just like taking the old relationship and transposing it onto this. Anyways, go on. I'm dying to know yeah. hear what he said. Like He was just like it just gives me a lot of anxiety. He's like it really stresses me out. And I was like when he phrased it like I was stressing him <laughs> out because he's he's a pretty calm and collected dude like yeah. and pretty even keel like not very ekg personality yeah. like just flatline 
That sounds makes him yeah, sound so, so he's boring. Dead. He's he, I am dating. He yeah. is Corpse. dead, but I mean, he listens so well. Um, but yeah, no, but he, yeah. So I think for him, he was just like, I don't even know what to do with it. And then yeah. my last relationship, it was almost like our main form of communication, which ultimately yeah. is why I left. But it it is interesting There's... for someone to just be like, oh, oh, this is not. This is not the this is not yeah. my culture. Like this is yeah. not how I communicate. It feels like there are people that like get off on arguing. Like it like is just like a way of like this is how I'm moving forward and yeah. it's like it's like a it's like energy for them or some shit. It's in, it's like yeah. that hysteria makes yeah. them energized. You it's know, crazy. it doesn't it's almost like this the how like all press is good press, you know? Mm. So it's like all communication doesn't matter if it's like negative. I would, like, at least we're talking. Yeah. You know, it's I mean, couched in like, well, you, I'm just I'm just being honest. Or you it's know? passionate. They yeah. mistake it for passion yeah. because there's like yeah. this mania to it, this passion. Right. And then there's also this kind of um this repair system happening. So you can kind of it's it's really it's like cutting yourself and then be like, oh, now I have to take care of this. And you're like, see, look what I did. I took care of myself and I fixed myself. I'm like, yeah, but you like cut yourself yeah. in the first place. So, and then they have just like a rinse and repeat. I mean, it's a cycle. I think that's that's what it is. And it is the yeah. illusion of repair and 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 getting closer to one another. But really, I mean, I, I will say really, I mean, feel comfortable in your relationship, obviously, but really be careful and don't mince words because you can't unhear something. You really can't like I've gotten I've been gotten into arguments in relationships mm -hmm. where I'm like, I will never unhear what you said. Yeah. Mm. And that will and I can forgive you for it and I can try to overcome it. But it's like, God, that's going to be such a fucking stain on my I'm going to think about it. Yeah. And I, I have to ask you this because I could kind of get into arguments with my partner. And, uh, you know, we talked about the like, like, you know, hey, this stresses me out and everything. And I'd rather not do this and I'm like me neither so it's not like somebody wants to fight True. it's not about that it's like how, and I think it's actually more of like our egos are fighting one another like can't back down yeah. you know it's like how did you how did you kind of cerebrally like overcome like oh this stresses them out I'll stop doing this like did you know that you were kind of creating were you creating the fight did, was it little stuff or were you like no like this is how i have to communicate these things to you and i'm trying to do it in a you know a uh, uh, very like a, a digestible manner but it's maybe coming out a little aggressive yeah well i think i have a couple of thoughts on that i think that one thing that my therapist told me that i thought was really smart uh, was in my last relationship, I realized there was not like there weren't good boundaries. And that's why we would fly off the rails because like the respect had <laughs> this is like divulging so much, but I, I get very open book about stuff. But like, I think the respect had dwindled so much that it was like, yeah, you can just say anything you can throw down an argument whenever like, you know, we could be in the middle of Disneyland. And yeah. It's and it's like, the let's illusion. Tear it up. Like, it's oh, like the illusion fuck. of comfortability. You're like, so, oh, we're so comfortable. Yes. But it's scary. Yeah. And then um, and I was like, so when I met Sam, we would argue and I was like, I would get really scared afterwards because I was like, oh, he seems to be kind of pulling away. And I was like, I don't like how he is conditional with his love. Like I told myself that I was like, I don't like that it has to be conditional. And then my therapist was like, it absolutely has to be conditional. Whoa, interesting. She I never like, heard that. The love, uh, unconditional love is like mother and child. Yeah, it's, it's real. It I is not, totally agree. It is not mommy and daddy. Like that has to be, that has to be like curated and watered and fed. Like it's deposits it's and withdrawals. It's boundaries. Wow. And so when she said that, and I by the way, something. this is off of us. I mean, full, fully open book, had a miscarriage. And we were fighting, when we found out, sure. we were fighting so hard that I was like, this is, and then my therapist was one, and I was like, well, he can't yell at me because I had a mission. And she's like, that's not true. She was like, first of all, he also went through it. But second of all, he absolutely is going to be hurt, even if it's like you feel entitled to your anger, and, and you are. Like, it makes sense that you're upset right now. But it doesn't mean that you get to just go fly off the rails mm -hmm. yeah and wow. this is a comedy podcast <laughs> yeah, oh my god no sometimes this is good. we get real dude this we get real yeah i came in i was like i want to be funny i want to talk about leo and then i was like this is not the vibe we're, <laughs> we're, this, we're getting real today but yeah. that that stuff about him pulling away that's like how i am like if my girlfriend or 
you know, is mad at me or whatever. I'm just like, it fucks me up because I'm like, well, you're in a bad mood. You're in my house. This energy's everywhere. Yeah. Now I'm like, I could feel it. And now I'm like, this sucks. I can't concentrate. I feel like I'm not, it'd be crazy to say I'm always in a good mood, but I feel like I'm pretty like level. Like, obviously I get pissed about things or I'm like sad about things or whatever. Everybody has a spectrum, but like, I'm never like, I'm never like trying to be in a fight with somebody. You know what I mean? Right. Or I'm trying to like, whatever but it is like a thing where i'm like if you're upset with me about something then it like or you're upset about something then i feel it and then it's like i mean i guess it work, probably works the other way on her too when i'm upset but it's like a thing where it's like uh it just sucks and you're like you do pull back and i was yeah. like always that's interesting the the unconditional thing though because i was like it is all boundaries that's everything that i've learned in therapy is you just have to be like i need this or i need that and like asking for stuff is like so hard when you're a guy <laughs> or, yeah, or like being like this is how i f saying this is how i feel as a guy is such a hard thing to learn <laughs> I, yeah i think the trick too for me was like like i can have an intensity to my voice which is fully learned every woman in my family is like this where i sound mad when i'm genuinely just trying to like communicate how i feel but my tone is like intense yeah. yeah and i don't intend for it to sound that way and so then what ends up happening is like he like thinks we're in a fight and i was like no i promise in my heart like there is no piece of me that is trying to use like insulting language or like i i'm just trying to get across like what what i'm feeling and then it gets conflated because of the times that i wasn't being cool and so that is like a thing I'm trying to get better about of being like yeah. very clear with my tone of like try to be as respectful as possible even if you're pissed. I do yeah. like the uh, I feel like <laughs> this sounds like maybe toxic but I'll do like I will try to sound like NPR voice. I've done that fucking for Terry sure. Gross like sure. just be sure, like sure, sure. Mm -hmm. buttery you buttery know, and smooth. When you do that it really hurts my feelings yeah. because of this. But then I can say I can be such a tricky fucking cunt because mm. I can be like I can say something that is <laughs> it's like it's not like I'm like well you know it's just like because when you do that it really makes me feel like this and I mean no no I get you just want to be kind of like mean to me right now and that's and then he's like well you're being really and I'm like Right. Well, I'm actually talking, you would say I'm talking pretty normally, aren't I? And then like, I'm like, wow, I am so, you know, the worst thing is realizing in a relationship, I'm like, damn, I'm the toxic one. Like, I was like, oh my God. Like, I thought for years I was dating guys that were just these like. Everybody's toxic. Oh Everyone's my fucked God. up. Especially when you get like, close with just people. Just blaming people. It gets so gross. Everybody's all <laughs> fucked up because their parents are fucked up. We, Our parents are idiots and they ruined us. And like, that's okay. <laughs> It's fine. Yeah, We're it's all true. fucked up. Like everybody's talk. Everybody sucks. No. But like anybody that's like, it was their fault. It's like shut the fuck up. <laughs> it was your fault too. <laughs> shut the fuck up. It's like they did it. It's like well maybe you suck, and then they did that. Right. And yeah. You, you guys have both to have suck. accountability no matter what. Like you both suck. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it is. It takes two. Yeah. It, it also takes two. Patience. Like, okay, conditional love, like, I, I completely agree with, like, it's never unconditional. It's like, I just want unconditional love. I'm like, then you want to date somebody who has no respect for themselves. That's right. You want to have yeah. to date somebody who has no dignity yeah. for themselves to stand up for themselves or just be communicative with what they want. And then you get a family annihilator. I'm like, great, yeah, yeah, no. It'll be unconditional love until he fucking murders you and the kids. Or you, then like, you're like, I, this person's weak. I'm going to cheat on him. And then it's mm -hmm. like, well, you didn't have a backbone. It's like, because you want it the unconditional love type thing you know it's it's yeah. such a fucking it's a matrix man it's so tough and it's just like to let down like that's something i'm 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 so challenged by that like i want to expand and grow and admit when i'm wrong and it is like there's something that is so difficult and i really think it's just like ego I, it's so hard for me to admit when i did something wrong Oh. When I did, it is like, and I can apologize, but it'll always have an asterisk. Like, I'll be like, no, I am. I'm really sorry. Like, you're totally right. But, you know, I was really, and I'll say, I, I can't shut, I can't stop that's, it. That's good that you know that. I know it, it but it's really like good. the diagnosis is not the same as the cure. Like, I don't have, I can, yeah. I can say, yes, yeah. I have this issue, but in order to, to fight it, to mitigate it, I'm like, I can't. And so sometimes I've just practiced this. I'm just quiet. Like I'll get, instead of I'm like, okay, 
it's so difficult for me to just eloquently describe how I'll feel that I'll just say sorry. And then I'm like, okay, like my mm-hmm. inner monologue is like, now stop talking. Mm-hmm. Just stop. Yeah, sometimes you just have to stop. Stop. Talking. I've had times where I really have to be like, Jamie, <laughs> like it does not matter. Whatever you think you're yeah. about to say that's so important, like just shut it down. My, yeah. my therapist said this that was very, very helpful to me. She said, whenever you have a conversation with your partner, you have to ask yourself, is this getting me closer to this person? Like when you bring something up, like Mm -hmm. is me bringing this up getting me closer to them, you know, instead or is it going to push me away? Because sometimes you just want to like, I have this issue with like, I want to set the record straight, which is such a fucking ego thing of just being like, well, yeah, no, no, you're right, but. You know, I just want to mention that it, it actually didn't really go down like that. And it's like, things are symbolic. Things are representational. They don't have to be literal. Like a lot of times, like we really get, we'll sweat the small stuff because it's like, well, technically you actually didn't do it like that. Or something like that. It was actually mm-hmm. like this. And I'm like, mm-hmm. what am I doing? I'm just fucking <laughs> throwing bombs in this thing. But I've tr- really tried to go actively with that. We're just like, okay, let's say I have some complaint to air or something like that or something I, I feel like I really need to communicate I have to ask myself is this going to get me closer with my partner mm. like is this me saying this going to get me closer to them or and maybe it's like because sometimes you do have something to to air out and you're like you know what they, they need to know this actually because it's something important like I've sat with this for a little bit and I realized they the thing they did the other day actually did kind of bother me and I, I have to really mm. and mm. me admitting that to them uh, even if it's petty and dumb and maybe I'm embarrassed that what they did mm. hurt me. Like, you know, because sometimes it's embarrassing. You're like, oh, you said this thing and it like kind of hurt my feelings and I feel lame about it. Yeah, you know what I mean? Sucks. Like, I feel lame that that hurt I mean, my feelings. But I have to yeah. admit that to you so you know. And that makes you closer to the person. For the sure. That's that's the whole thing about being a guy, too, is you're like grow up and you're like you're just supposed to be tough and just like move on and just head down. Keep keep going. Keep working. But like the littlest things like being like hey i didn't like your tone that's the other thing is it's like tone is like so much more than the words because it's like yeah. well i just can tell you're fucking mad so <laughs> just because you're not saying like fuck you or you're an ass like you know what i mean like the tone is everything but like being like hey i didn't like this in this moment you feel like such a loser because mm. c- it's a little thing but that little thing if you keep letting those little things, then it turns into a big thing. But the big thing all comes from all the little things. So like catching the little thing early and being like, hey, this thing like bothers me. And then, you know, they'll probably get mad at you for a second. But then just let them be mad because then they'll be like, they'll they'll either come around and you'll be like, this is a good person who listens and blah, blah, blah. Or if they like are just like, fuck you. Well, then you know you don't want to be with that person. Yeah. You shouldn't be with that I person I think sometimes anyway. like conflict, it feels... It just feels bad. So you're like, oh, I shouldn't say anything. Am I just kind of being like naggy right now and I should not say anything? But then it does start to kind of mount up and mount up. You have to, it's like choosing your battles, but also standing up for yourself. And then when you want to stand up for yourself, doing it in a really careful way. Like you have to, even if you're really comfortable with the person. I think that's the thing. Like there's, it's like why you were talking about how you and your ex would just get into these like massive arguments. And in this kind of, the lens you had was like, oh, we're just so open and comfortable. It's like we're destroying each other. We're cannibalizing each other. It also would leave you, it left me like incredibly depleted. Like I would cancel plans after. I was like, I don't have it in me. I'm so tired. It would be like hours. And I was like, and it would be, it was just like, yeah, I wouldn't even really understand where it started. It would just like come up and then yeah it just got to a point where whatever and it gets yeah. become so convoluted that you're like we don't even know what when you're like yeah can like, you what repeat? Are we mad about you feel like you're in like a fucking courtroom where you're like i'm like can you actually sidebar and repeat what you actually said specifically in this thing and you yeah. know and then you're like why am i fucking doing I this think like also with arguing i think something that always stresses me out about it is if i really am just like bothered by one thing or it's like this is just like one little thing or it seems like one little thing and then you say it and then it somehow parlays into all these other things. And I'm like, can we just stay focused on the thing? Like I, I that is always something where I'm like, I don't 
Like we can deal with those in a different conversation, but for this one, can we just like it's so hard. It's like discuss it, the thing. There's a term in pop psychology called kitchen sink, you know, where you yes, throw in everything yes, but the, yes, kitchen yes, sink. the kitchen sink. So yeah. like if you're let's say you got disappointing information from like a job or something, like, hey, we're gonna go in another direction, and then you're like, fuck, that sucks. And then also like I got a zit and like, dude, am I fucking is my hair grew, going gray? And I'm oh like, my God, I haven't heard yeah. from my fucking dad in a while. Is he okay? Like what's and then you're just like every single thing in your life. You're yeah. Then, yeah. then you've had this, you've created your own insurmountable problem yeah. instead of just being like, oh, I'm just disappointed about not getting this job I was looking forward to. That's those the people, only thing I was. Those people on Twitter that just are like, no, this happened to me. No, this thing. And then this, thing. it's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Go get a friend and hang out with people. <laughs> Go Stop. get a friend. A friend. Go, like, there's people that I follow on Twitter and it's just like they're complaining about everything and the only reason i know about it is because my friend will like dm me it they'll be like look at this and then he's like <laughs> laughing at it and i'm like i can't help but look but it's just like a thing where it is like yeah you you like create your own bed like it's just like if it's like all these bad things happen to you that's like the energy you're putting out there because it is like there, you could also just be like well it's fucking nice out i live in los angeles man i can afford a coffee like oh shit i could get lunch with a friend like you could also do that with the those things but like you're just choosing to be like why didn't why did this happen to me it's like it feels like it's like yeah you're just like making your life hard perspective man it's all yeah. about perspective um with that unfortunately we do have to wrap even though i'm enjoying this conversation so fucking much i know i know, I know i'm stacking it today good. i got i got fucking uh, no 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 it's good we talked that's probably why it went by fast i know i know it was a you know i i really appreciate both coming on do you have anything to plug can you tell them where to find you oh yeah uh you can find me it's at really jamie lee on instagram and i have shows coming up i'll be posting a link soon doing some touring so. great and then please plug your tour as well, my carmen. yeah i'm going on a stand-up tour um my instagram is carmen yes carmen all my shows are there i'm going everywhere baby come please <laughs> well thank you so much for listening and uh, i love you all and have a wonderful day or night or afternoon or evening or middle of the day or whatever the hell you're doing drive bedtime Goodbye. Thank you.